Oh, I know this is killing me. Hey, everyone. So, I wanted to continue the real-world application. I finished the Next.js implementation of the backend. I haven't done deployment just because I don't really want to dive into that right now. But uh, we're going to start on the front end right now. And I originally wanted to wait until React Router version 6 came out. But I think this is a good time to explore a stack of technologies that I haven't really used yet. It comes from this uh, ebook by Sierra Vieira. Uh, so I guess a little shout out to her. She has a opinionated guide to React because if you don't already know, uh, React is a pretty unopinionated library that you kind of just build up your framework as you go. And you kind of just pick whatever technologies you want. In this book, she outlined a couple of libraries that I haven't really played with yet. And I think it'll be fun to learn some of that. Just a quick overview. For state management, we're going to be using Overmind. It's a library like Redux, but they do th a couple of things differently. And I do know that Overmind is much more TypeScript intensive. For forms, uh, we're using Formic, which is pretty standard in the React world right now. But there's a new version that came out that I haven't really used all that much. and. Uh, my assumption is that they moved a lot of their API to hooks, but we'll find out. And finally, for routing, we're going to be using Reach Router, which, if you don't know, was created by the co creator of React Router, and it also served as inspiration for the new version of React Router v6. A lot of the APIs are inspired by how Reach Router has done it, and we're going to go ahead and use that. So I went ahead and created a starter repo that you could start your project in. It's just create React app with a couple of um, added uh, defaults from the, what is this called? The real world example stuff. So for obvious reasons, we're going to be using TypeScript because we're not savages, obviously. <laughs> um, but I've also added the front end instructions from Markdown and my personal prettier configuration. And we go ahead and clone this. So I'm gonna do a git clone. CD into React conduits. Open it up. And I'm gonna do yarn install. And while that's going on, let's explore what I've added. So, nothing here. The app file is just a hello world. Entry file hasn't really changed. Um, Create React app has added a strict mode. This is just gonna add, give us better errors. And then finally, I added an API directory. And we go into index file. It's just Axios. And I've created a function for every single API endpoint that our backend has. I didn't want to do this on camera just because I feel like it's busy work and there's no real educational value here. Um, but I will go over a couple of utility uh, methods. So the reason why I'm using Axios is because it's a request library that's stateful. So we could have um, the base URL here and we don't have to add it to each request and then finally we could add the token for auth authorization easily and expect each request to be authenticated wait a minute I need to update the set token method hold on um, so we're not always gonna set or we're not always gonna get called this set token method with a string so we're going to do a quick check, so if token, we're going to set the token, but we also want to set lo the token inside of local storage, so set item, and I think it's access token that we want it inside of, yeah, and it's going to be token, and then if we 
received no token. Um, we're gonna make sure local storage dot set item, and we're gonna clear it. So it's not set item; it's remove item. Access token, and then we're also gonna make sure that our Axios instance, which we call request, uh, right here, and we're gonna remove the token from so from authorization. So authorization undefined. All right, and then also uh, accompanying this file, I added a models file, which is just gonna be all of the types. And a lot of these, uh, if you follow the NestJS course, should be familiar. They're kind of taken from it. So we have like the DTOs, we have the responses, and then up here is just some extra typing. So the body is gonna be an object, where the key is provided and the type is the, the type thing. Um, this also needs to be updated, so the body, we don't need the base entity, but the response we do. So base entity. Um, and that, this is Axios response because Axios wraps our response in an object called data. So, um, so our data is gonna look something like this. So, or the response from Axios is gonna look like data. Then our response, let's say it's for auth, it'll be user. Then it'll be our user uh, response, whatever that will be. I think it comes with a token, but eh, whatever, we'll get there. All right, let's look at the instructions. And let's wait for the syntax highlighting, and here we go. So there's a couple of things that Conduit or Go Thinkster gives us. Uh, one of them is that we're gonna be using a custom bootstrap template that they give us. So I added that to our index.html. That is down here somewhere. Uh, is Right, here we go. This one is the bootstrap CSS file. We have some fonts that they want us to use and icons. And these are Ionic icons if, you, if you've ever played with Ionic. Oh, and then also another thing in our uh, instructions, they give us HTML, um, yeah, just HTML that is pre-written uh, as a template it's it has all the class names to it um you can copy and paste some of this into react components if you want to uh, just know that if you do uh, you'll have to change class to class name and all that other stuff uh, we're going to be replacing anchors with the link tags from reach router and uh, what else is there that I should tell you? Oh, and then also for all these list items, um, we're gonna actually use JavaScript so we don't have to write it over and over again. But yeah, that's a quick overview of our starter project. And next video, we're actually gonna start doing some real code. And I think I'm gonna start using Overmind for state management because I know that we're going to do authentication since it's so important to the application.